Now, in the global race to achieve net zero emissions and to quell China's geopolitical power, the hunt is on for critical minerals. One curiosity of this, though, is that researchers right now are trying to work out if large deposits of these minerals were left behind as waste in abandoned mine decades ago. Lithium, cobalt, tungsten, graphite, vanadium, rare earths. These are some of the critical minerals. All are in hot demand as technology advances and the world races to cut emissions. Australia, fortunately, has reserves of each of them and we're looking for more. We have amazing assets in terms of the, the metal endowment in the ground and the potential to discover more. The application of critical minerals is quite amazing. Rare earths are used to make lasers, computers, magnets, electric motors, wind turbines. Light rare earths, neodymium and praseodymium play an important role in the permanent magnets used in electric vehicles. Their heavier cousins, like dysprosium, are more valuable and often used in defence equipment. There are some very big graphite deposits here in, in South Australia on the Air Peninsula. Uh, they are probably also at the stage where they're, they're, they may be moving to production fairly soon. Vanadium is seen as a better alternative to lithium for safe and long-life stationary batteries. Mostly used in steel production, its price has been volatile this year, but the Australian government's modelling predicts vanadium prices to trend up until mid-2022. Tantalum and indium are vital for electronic components like semiconductors. Tungsten has the highest melting point of all metals. It is used in missiles and is crucial to the defence sector. Demand for these particularly unusual metals, not, uh, they're not common for most people, it is going to increase rapidly in the next couple of decades. Investment in critical minerals mining and processing has languished in the West for many years as China secured a strategic stranglehold over the industry. But the geopolitical environment has changed all that. The fact that the world has such a heavy reliance on um, materials coming out from China is not healthy for industry as a whole. Linus owns the Mount Weld Rare Earths Mine in WA, about 240 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie, which could be Australia's greatest asset in the fight for rare earth supremacy. Australia has a mineral endowment which is second to none. Mount Weld is uh, you know, recognised as the premier um, deposit um, in, in the world, really, and uh, so we're happy that we have the opportunity to develop our deposit. It's a collapsed volcano core, variously estimated at around about a billion years old. It is rich in light rare earths, but it is also relatively enriched in heavies. Linus Rare Earths recently inked a deal with the Pentagon to build a rare earth processing plant in the United States. The issue here was the F-35 Lockheed Martin stealth fighter jet needs 920 pounds of rare earths. Linus's plant in Malaysia is currently the only plant capable of processing rare earths outside of China. Linus CEO Amanda Lacaz says the US Department of Defense is pushing self-reliance of the US manufacturing sector. To ensure that uh, modern manufacturing continues to have a place in their economies and to have modern manufacturing, you need a secure and resilient rare earth supply chain. Life in the world of Linus is actually very exciting at present. Um, after many years of uh, promising much, the rare earths market is certainly delivering in spades right now. Many new explorers have entered the race, like Australian rare earths. By looking through an old PhD thesis, the company uncovered rare earth deposits in clay soils near the SA Vic border. The, the reason um, companies get excited about, uh, about, about moving into the rare earth space is that, is that there's, a, there's, a, there's a market driver to, to really get uh, access to, to rare earth minerals. The minerals the company has discovered include praseodymium and neodymium. But what is unusual is that this style of deposit is currently only mined and processed in China and Myanmar. Certainly over the next decade I would see, I would see uh, two or three additional rare earth deposits coming into uh, production. Carl Spandler from the Australian Minerals Research Centre says a critical minerals mining boom will be different from the past, driven by smaller mines not operating on the scale of iron ore production. In many cases we're going to be looking at, at Central Australia as, as being 
the real place where the critical mineral supply will come from. Certainly South Australia uh, NT but Western Australia in a big way. There's a lot of opportunity in Western Australia. Uh, Western Queensland, Western New South Wales. But there is hope for coal mining communities on the East Coast, with significant heavy industry infrastructure already in place, if critical minerals can be found in coal waste. We've got mine wastes from decades and decades of mining in Australia, uh, and as I said earlier, a lot of these metals are, are relatively new um, in terms of their importance as a society, so we still don't actually have a very good handle on whether there may be a lot of these metals sitting in mine waste. Rio Tinto recently announced it is sifting through its sludge in search for critical minerals. The rush for these critical minerals and the prices they bring has prompted a range of explorers and academics to head back to abandoned mine sites in the hopes of renewed riches. Academics from the University of Adelaide and Charles Darwin University are leading this research push at mines and tailings dumps, hoping old miners left behind minerals they did not know would become so valuable. And a lot of the time, it's not that they weren't even considered valuable in the past, it's just we didn't even look for them. Thanks to innovations in machine learning and AI, at this old mine site, now owned by mining company NT Bullion, new pits may not need to be dug, making the exercise more cost efficient. Everything we're learning there is helping us improve the footprint of the future while remediating the footprint of the past. Experts say research is vital to ensure Australian mines are extracting minerals as efficiently as possible to compete with low-cost mines in countries like China. You're getting more, more bang for your buck in regard to ore generated, uh, value of ore. Mining, sovereign protectionism and environmentalism. Strange bedfellows moving in the same direction. I'm rather hopeful that we're all greenies in our hearts. It is essential that we have new technologies if we are to achieve the outcomes in terms of reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and, um, you know, sort of improving uh, the way that we are caring for our environment and our globe. Uh, once again, rare earths are critical in that process.